Hello, beautiful nerdy stitchers. This is Mev back for an update from Paris. Today is Sunday, September 29th. It's been another seven weeks since my last update. Um, so I've got sort of a lot of show and a lot to talk about. Um, I hope you're all well, that um, people in the Northern Hemisphere are enjoying the uh, first signs of fall and that um, those people very far away in the Southern Hemisphere are enjoying um, the start of spring. Um, first things first, I have one person to thank for reaching out and let me know where they live, and that is Sandra Schuler, who is uh, near Springfield, Missouri. So I've added her wrong side yet again on the world map of stitchers um, for those of you who would be joining for the first time this uh, world map features um, all the beautiful people that had have reached out to me and let me know where they live so that i can um, add their names and think of them um, while i'm stitching so welcome and thank you um, it's been a while i have um, a few things that were finished but unfortunately that I can't really show you and then I've got two new very 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 exciting starts um, and uh, loads to um, talk about let me see so in terms of fully finishes actually there were four but I don't have them anymore because all of them were gifted I'm just gonna list them real quick and um, I would invite you to um, go on Instagram for some of those so that you can um, check them out if you so wish. Um, the first one that I had fully finished and gifted was the African Queens by Vickery Collections that I had stitched in a pretty different manner than was charted. Um, I have stitched that with some Suceda silks um, and, and some of the called for DMCs. Uh, it was fully finished as a um, tote bag for my niece um, and you can find some pictures of the fully finished piece on Instagram uh, on my mid-August posts. Um, the second one is um, Dragons of Sumatra that has been professionally framed and gifted to the lovely darling Bluebell Nika for her birthday. And she has posted some beautiful pictures last Sunday, so September 22nd. Um, and I'm overjoyed that she liked it and um, it makes me very happy to know that uh, it will be in her home now, in her new home by the way, pretty soon. So that was the second one. The third one was um, the long awaited fully finished um, with thy needle and thread by Brenda Gervais. It's this lady with a huge skirts and all the stitchy stuff that had finished for my mom's birthday back in April, but I only fully finished it two weeks ago and it is now in her home, in her living room. And I think she was really happy about it. Um, again, pictures of that are on my Instagram that I will link below um, from I think two weeks ago. Yes, absolutely. And then the last one, um, but certainly not the least of, of them is the, um, our Lasting Friendship by Blackbird Designs, which, which was fully finished as a little um, frame, so to speak. I just laced it um, and I gifted it to my very, very dear friend, Leah, Aviatrix Stitcher. And I know she has received it and opened it on her birthday last Monday. And so I'm very happy um, stitching for others. I know some of you don't really <laughs> like that, um, but it actually fuels my love for the craft so so all those were fully finished um and i'm very glad and then um and gifted away and i think very much appreciated so yeah that's enough for me um that's really really what i like doing in terms of finishes i do have a stitch finish which is not completely finished yet because it's missing an important part and I think that's what I'm going to show you first. Um, as you may know, I've been working on Parchment Tapestry by Rosewood Manor for a while now. I can't remember when I started it. It was probably um, last spring, maybe? Yes, yes, when I finished Dragons of Sumatra. So let me show you 
the piece as I've finished it. At least the stitching is finished. So this is Parchment Tapestry by Rosewood Manor in full. And it is gorgeous. Okay, let me try and show you. how I did this. So I have been using all of the called four colors and these are Weeks Dye Works um, as charted by Karen Kluba because she's a genius with colors. Can you see that crazy alphabet that I very much love? I've inserted my signature using the M here. I've just stitched a tiny little Mev. Um, so this is the finished, ver well the finished cross stitching at least and as you can see obviously there are two areas that have been left unstitched and most of you know that um, in those areas um, there is going to be excerpts of a poem by Arthur Rimbaud called Rêver pour l'hiver which means dreamed for the winter and after much much discussions and musings and thinking, etc., etc. I now know how those letters, those words are going to be put on fabric. And that's exciting. <clears throat> and it's not me who will do it. Um, so I have finally decided that the words of the poems are going to be directly written on the fabric by my beloved partner Z. Um, and they won't be stitched over. So it's going to be his own handwriting. Uh, he will probably use some um, special fabric pen pens. Um, I know they exist, and I've recently seen an example of a friend of mine who actually um, drew some beautiful motifs on a jean jacket, and it's perfect. And she done she she did that with some special um, fabric pens, and it's been like two three years, and it hasn't moved at all. So I'm very very happy to know that it exists out there, and so. In this area and that area, um, my partner will be writing in his own handwriting the um, parts of the poem. He still needs to determine what words he's going to put where. And obviously, I need to get the pens and we, we will do some, some testing on, on random pieces of uh, 36 count. This um, is a piece of 36 count linen hand dyed by the Lovey Lee um, XJU design and it's in the colorway roasted nuts. So he will try it on a similar fabric and then he will go ahead and write. And we did some like very, very small tests and I wanna show you his handwriting because it's beautiful. Um, wanna take a look at it again? Oh, it's so beautiful. It is so very beautiful. Yes. Okay. So let me show you. Um, so I had I had um, tested the couching t technique to to stitch some letters. Um, the thing is, if I want some actual verses of this poem written, um, stitching them would be a very like kind of difficult because it's it need it would need to be very small. And so writing them directly on the fabric is probably the better way to go. So let me just show you this tiny piece of it's a, probably more of a 30 count piece of random linen, but I just want to show you our different tries. So this has been stitched with a couching technique, couching technique rather. Um, and then we, we, we took some random pens and then, and then this is my handwriting, very poor penmanship, but this is his here. So this is my partner's handwriting and he's got a beautiful slanted penmanship and I really, really like it. And so it will be written by him in that style. Um, and the idea is to find colors that would be those kinds of purpleys, purples, sorry. Um, first, because they appear in the piece everywhere. And second, it reminds me of how um, old ink has um, faded in, you know, in, in older like um, school uh, book notes and stuff. So I do still have notebooks from my great grandfather and my grandfather when they were 
boys in school and um and it's exactly the same kind of shade where the probably originally the ink may have been black but it, then it faded into purples and i think it would be very very um, nice to to have the poem written in that kind of colorway so this is still a work in progress but my part is finished um so i'm very happy and i'm very excited that um z has accepted to um to actually write in my piece a little bit scary but i'm sure it's going to be lovely and i mean this the, the meaning of the piece in the end is going to be so very precious to me so i can't wait that for that to happen hopefully we can um try and do some testing in two weeks time um hopefully he will be able to visit me so we'll see more to come soon hopefully with pictures and all it's very exciting very very exciting now because this was finished i needed to have another start and um so here's the story early august leah in in one of her i think it was second to last video early August Leah mentioned that for her birthday September 23rd she wanted to start some kind of birthday birthday sal and um, and she had decided that she would uh, I think start autumn nodding sampler maybe by tempting tangles and so she invited everybody to join her whether it be with a specific chart or any kind of autumn fall related uh, piece and so obviously I had to start something for her birthday so I started looking at things and I found something that I really 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 wanted to stitch but that was in August and her birthday was on September 23rd so I had like over a month to wait and that was horrible <laughs> it was too long so then I, I thought well okay if, in order to wait until that day, um, I would start something else in between. And um, when thinking of that, uh, I thought that I might want to stitch some some pieces to make cushions out of them to put on my on my couch, which is new. I, I told you that in my last video. Anyway, so I came out with the idea that I wanted to find some patterns to stitch some some pieces to make cushions out of them to put on my couch. First, my thought was to find some geometric designs, uh, you know, square things um, to to actually be able to do cushions. Um, I think it made sense. I thought it made sense. And so I started looking at the uh, in the very famous um, designers that we all love that do very geometric uh, stitching, such as um, ink circles, for instance, or um, what's his name? Well, modern folk embroidery who has beautiful designs um, and then I went uh, and looked at long dump samplers who, who ha also has um, some geometric things and when I was browsing her website long dump samplers um, I stumbled upon an awesome insane beautiful alphabet and I went for that one so let me introduce you to Saint-Sénoc, um, which is a sampler. Where is it? There it is. Um, and OK, so let me show you the piece. So this is the original design by Long Dog Samplers. It's E there. I wasn't expecting that. These are Celtic inspired letters illuminated letters it's gorgeous the colors are not my colors obviously it's it's too bright too all over the place for me but when i saw the letters i knew i had to do this because they're crazy and they're beautiful and what's interesting is um i i had the feeling this was inspired by celtic illuminated letters and so I, I, um, I search a bit on the internet and I stumbled across most, some of you may know the, of this book. If you don't, I would urge you to go and check it out. Um, some of those letters are very, very um, closely inspired by the Book of Kells. The Book of Kells is a, um, is a book that was 
written um, in the year 800, not 1800, 800, by Catholic monks um, in a small island off of Ireland. Um, and it's um, the transcription of the Gospels, of the four Gospels from the New Testament and the Bible. And, um, and what's very special about it is first, we still have it. It's in um, Trinity College in Dublin, Ireland. And it is absolutely gorgeous. The, um, the, the colors have stayed intact. The letters are absolutely insanely beautiful. And then the decorations in the book as was very common in medieval, medieval um, religious books are beautiful. If you're interested, please go check it out on the internet. It's, it's just insane. Anyway, and so I fell on, into a bit of a rabbit hole, just, you know, um, looking at letters and understanding how, why the alphabet looks so specific, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's really fascinating. Um, but I won't go into that. Otherwise, this is going to be two hours long. Anyway, so when I saw this, I obviously fell in love. Um, but it's huge and it's rectangular rather than square. And my idea for this was really to, to stitch some cushions. So in order for it to be smaller and to be square or diamond shaped, I actually decided to do them in two parts. Um, and actually when I was trying to determine which fabrics I wanted to use and, and whatnot, I actually put, picked out two different fabrics and I couldn't choose. So I thought, okay, those are too many letters to be put on the same piece. And so, and I can't choose the fabric, so I'll just do two different cushions. And so it took me like, I don't know, maybe two or three weeks of like non ending thinking and, and, and testing and elaborating and discussing obviously. And so I came up with two different setups to stitch all 26 letters on two different pieces. The color inspiration is obviously, so this dark, this way, this dark gray here, and this gorgeous, beautiful thing that is on, is lying on my couch. So this was the, um, this was the color inspiration. So I had, I had to find fabrics and threads that would match this piece of huge piece of fabric that was gifted to me 12 years ago by my boss in my previous 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 apartments and he had no clue it would be so fitting but i mean come on guys can you see this like <laughs> it's perfect so anyway so i did a floss toss and a fabric toss on this and i came up with two different fabrics which i'm going to show you right now I don't know how I'm going to do this. It's going to be messy. So this is a fabric. I look like a Roman, whatever, lady. Um, so the fabrics are this piece of, um, what's it called? Vintage Country Mocha by Zweigart. It's a printed fabric. And it's this is a 36 count linen. So this one, oh, I don't want to spoil this. Okay, so this one here. Okay, and then the other one is a gorgeous, gorgeous deep red. Oh, look at this. It shows, I don't know what it shows, but let me, yeah, that's probably more true to life. Okay, can you imagine those two cushions on this fabric? I certainly can. It's so messy, Mev. Anyway, so there's going to be two cushions. Um, the first of of which I've started on this thing here. And then the second will be on this one. So let me try and explain how I did this. Put this away. Um, the first cushion is going to be square and it's going to be fi it's going to be 15 letters, uh, roughly four by four with one exception. Now, take a look at this handmade mock-up. It's really like um, probably first grade kind of level. But what I did is I just cut out all the letters and put them back together in a square to determine how I would position the letters and which would go next to which. So it's completely random order because it had to be random order. Um, 
What I did in order to select which letters would go on which fabric is basically, and that was my partner's idea. He's the smartest guy ever. So what we thought was this, this color, the vintage um, country mocha is pretty neutral. So um, he, he said, why don't you use the more, the fuller letters on that fabric and then on the burgundy, well, on the very deep red one, why don't you use more um, the uh, filigree kind of looking letters? So namely like the K, the I, the J, um, the R, the S. So see where more fabric would show. Um, he, he suggested that I use the darker, more beautiful fabric. And then for the, for the fuller letters like the M, the E, whatever, I would use the other one. So this is what I did. So I separated the full letters versus the more filigree looking like letters to actually determine which would be on which fabric. So I came up with a first set of, as I mentioned, 15 letters, which are going to be stitched on the, uh, on the more neutral fabric. And so this is my mock-up. Beautiful, just, <laughs> I, um, yeah. So I cut out the letters and then, and then used some little double uh, sided tape to put it on a piece of paper. And so this is the mock-up of the first cushion. Um, yeah, so that was interesting. And then the second one is going to be diamond shape, actually, because the letters were, it made sense to do a diamond and I like the idea. So this is going to be the second cushion. And see, as, as I mentioned, so it's, it's more the, the emptier letter, so to speak, that will be sta st stitched, so A, K, I, J, S, Q, R, Z, T, L, and V. And, and obviously I placed the letters according to their shapes, having in mind that it'll be a diamond rather than a square. Um, and I have all my calculation. I mean, people's, I spent hours and hours on this and I just had a blast. Um, so, so that will be the second cushion stitched again on that beautiful, beautiful red fabric. There you go. And then of course I had to pick out the threads and the threads, I just did a floss toss with the fabrics that I had determined I would, I wanted to use and keeping in mind this, this kind of colors, this is, yeah, this is exactly the real colors and it's beautiful it's some kind of like there there's some kind of velvety shiny pieces of fabric it's got a lot of texture it's it's gorgeous so let me try and show you the colors i went for if i can i don't know if you'll see no no no, no. i need to take them out so these are the kind of colors i selected it's a whole bunch and it's a whole mess and i haven't prepared this some blues, this gor gorgeous Gloriana gold, and then some like deep reddish purples, and then a few, a couple of greens. Oh man, this is so not good, Nev. Anyway, I'm gonna show you the stitches. And, um, and so I started. And I have four letters complete on the first piece. You've seen this on Instagram if you follow me there. And it's gorgeous. Are you ready? Ta-da! Okay, so we've got ourselves an H, no, this one here, H, F, a big M, which I think looks like a plump, healthy bottom, if I may. And then the gorgeous wide, look at, ah, Mev, look at this wide here. Yeah, that's better. Oh, look. <laughs> oh, it is so very nice. So what I do is each time I'm ready to start a letter, I just pick and choose some of this, uh, the threads that I have um, in, in this particular set. And um, let me try and show you this again. You've seen, again, you've seen pictures maybe on Instagram. 
but like isn't it cool isn't it just like oh so good it is so very good there you are so this was my start in order to wait for Ligia Noel's um, birthday salve. And so again, so far if I did four letters. Um, I'll be starting the O probably today here. And it's just awesome. It's, it's just perfect. I love it. And I had a lot of work to do, uh, like on top of selecting the letters and how I wanted them to be placed, um, I wanted to end up with a square a perfectly square um, piece, right? And so what I actually did is I, I like I took X, an Excel spreadsheet and then reproduced each of the letters, at least their, their size, in order to make sure that I placed them correctly so that I ended up with a square. I will most probably do a border around um, the finished piece on each of the um, on each of the, the, the cushions. And just to make you laugh, um, <laughs> this is another version of my mock-ups. This is an Excel spreadsheet just printed out. And, and, and you see how I outlined some of the letters. This is upside down. So this is the central M that I just stitched. I don't know which of these, maybe this is the U. This is, I don't know what it is. But anyway, I had to just put the size of each of the letters to make sure that I ended up with a square, which is what I did here. Again, hours and hours and hours. And this is, you know, this is one part of the exercise that I absolutely love. So it was really cool. So this is saint Senoc, Most insane alphabet I've ever seen. And I know I said that about the, the parchment tapestry, but, but this one is like, okay the whole other dimension. And then at last, September 23rd arrived. And so I got to start my um, autumn birthday sal piece um, in celebration of Leah's uh, birthday. And so I'm going to show you what it is. It's another Barbara Anna design because she's awesome. So this is Portuguese bird sampler by Barbara Anna designs more letters and I mean the colors okay so it was supposed to be a fall piece right so so what struck me first obviously were the colors that are very folly like and then guys the bird those little horses and riders and then another two crazy birds. And then there's this beautiful text that I had seen already in a postcard uh, gifted to me by, sent to me by the lovely Megan Wide-Eyed Stitcher. And I saw it on other pieces. I tried to determine the origin of, of the verses and it seems to have been stitched on a sampler. I don't think there's actually an author. It wasn't like an, excer an excerpt of a poem or a text or whatever, but it's been around for a while because I've seen them on I've seen those those verses on samplers, American samplers from the 19th century. If you know more about this, please let me know because I've I've looked at it and I I really didn't couldn't find more than what I saw on samplers. So I don't know if it's just something taken out of a particular sampler from a little girl in the 19th century and then it just made its way in on different patterns or if it's an excerpt of an actual poem or written work or whatever. But it says, tell me your knowing and discerning friend where I may find the... F Sorry, let me do that again. Tell me your knowing and discerning few where I may find a friend both firm and true who dare stand by me when in deep distress and then his love and friendship most express. So this, this are the verses that are here, which you can't see, and then colorful alphabets and then those two crazy beautiful bands here um so that was it i mean straight away i saw this i said this is going to be my um this is going to be my false start 
I showed the pattern to my mom and she immediately said, oh, you could do a pouch with this. And so I said, yeah, and what do you see? And so she said, well, if you take only the, 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 the bands, like everything but the letters, you can actually do a, a pouch with that. And I thought, yeah, that would be a good idea. And I would keep the verses and the alphabet to do maybe, I don't know, some kind of like card or something like that. And so I started with the pouch idea. Um, and again, I had to think about like um, the disposition of the bands that I wanted to stitch if I made a pouch and do it like make sure I did this correctly on the piece of fabric that I had chosen so that it would make sense once it's actually sewed as a pouch and everything. Um, and so again, more elaboration, more thinking, more trying to come up with something that wasn't you know that would that would make sense etc so what i did is i cut out a piece of paper at the scale of the of the fabric i mean at the scale of the actual fabric piece of fabric that i had sorry and then and then i had to fold it as though it was the pouch in order to be sure i was stitching on the like right side up because obviously it's going to be inverted let me let me try and explain what I'm saying here. So this will be the flap of the pouch, right? And so this is this is where the uh, the big bird and horses will be. On the on that part of the so the lower flap that will be stitched as a pouch will be just a tiny little border band, um, which is on the design. And then on the other side of the pouch would be um, the band with the two birds and the date, right? So, oh yeah, and I forgot to tell you, but all this I absolutely wanted to stitch on a piece of 40 count linen that was gifted to me by the lovely Linda, Linda Belmont. Um, she was the one to gift me with the Vickery Collection African Queen's design and the crazy Mississippi's Pride Silk. And she had also put in this, in this package a piece of extra u design 40 count linen which is gorgeous and it's called white mustard and i'll show you in a minute this piece was such and such size and i had to fit the pattern on that piece of fabric to do the pouch because i wanted to stitch it on that piece so again measurements it's going to be really really tight my mom doesn't know but she's going to help me stitch the actual pouch in the end she'll she's going to have like I don't know, maybe half half an inch on each side. She, she's going to be very angry at me. But still, I wanted to stitch it on that on that particular fabric. So um, again, you've seen this on, on Instagram. Um, I've started this last Monday and I've been stitching like crazy. And so this is where it stands. It is stitched one over what? One over two, one over two, 40 counts white mustard extra u design fabrics and this is where it's at <laughs> as you can see i started by the um by the insanely big crow or blackbird or what have you raven so this is this is where i'm at um i, I love, okay this is the perfect colors can you feel how like it's a perfect fit for autumn so far the black is going to take a little bit of time, right? It's actually espresso beans by mm, Gast, maybe? Yeah, I think it is. Yes. So this is where I'm at so far. You can't see them, but they'll stick out once the black is stitched. There are some little motifs on the um, on the feathers of the uh, of the bird. Um, it's beautiful. It's really, really nice. So this will be the flap of the pouch. It's pretty. It's gonna be pretty big, actually. I think it's um, this is a what, twelve inch square Q snap maybe. Can't remember. So this will be the flap of the pouch. This will be obviously the back of the pouch. And then it'll be folded. You'll see it when, when we get to this. Um, Barbara Anna mostly charts her um, designs with DMC and as exactly as I did for Midnight uh, that I stitched for my aunt last year, 
what I did is I actually bought the called for DMCs and then I did a conversion with what I had in stash, but I can't do that. I w well, I wasn't able to do that without, sorry about the moving, without um, actually picking the threads first. So I've converted practically all the threads with, with my um, overdyed and this is the selection I came up with. Oh, it's going to be so good. It's going to be so very good. And so, yeah. <laughs> so that's going to be an awesome, an awesome stitch. I'm extremely grateful for, uh, for Leah enabling me. And the cool thing is, I discovered earlier this week, what was it maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, Jessie Marie, Jessie does stuff actually started the sampler um she started it um on the top and so she already did a big portion of the of the um top borders and then she started two of the different alphabets and she's also converting so it's going to be fascinating to see what choices she makes versus the ones that i made um and um and she also dubbed this piece serendipity and that's one of my favorite English words. So from now on, this piece, the Portuguese sampler by Barbara Anna Designs will be called Serendipity because words. Um, I'm extremely excited. Don't know what the pouch will become. We'll see when we get there. But um, for now, I'm just I'm just having a blast and um, I had to uh, I had to stop stitching on it because Scott stitches in Spain said so um, on my last Instagram post. So I I did actually do a little bit more, um, but I I picked up the uh, the letters again, the um, Celtic alphabet again because I was told to, so I did. Um, I think this is all I wanted to talk. So two main whips, two starts actually, that are becoming whips. Um, I also have La Boud, uh, my dad's tool shed piece uh, on which I was kind of stuck last time you saw it. Um, I had a long uh, brainstorming session with my aunt. We came up with some ideas. So I have continued stitching on it. Um, there's not much to show, so I'll, I'll probably talk about it more in, in a later update. Um, but I think I, um, I think I'm on, on the way to make it look better on this crazy fabric. Um, I've got one more thing to show. And then I think I have, uh, a pattern to offer to whomever might be interesting so let's get into that it's gonna be pretty short and sweet after all i always say that and then it ends up being an hour long we'll see um back in august when we had this birthday party for my niece um I was gifted something very special by my nephews and nieces. And this is something that comes from where they live and which is Niger. And they were very, very exciting, um, excited to um, gift me with this. Um, and I, I need to show it to you because they thought that would become somehow part of my stitching. <sighs> Let me explain. So um, as, as I've told you time and again, um, my sister and her five kids live in Niger. And when they want to take a break from the capital city where they live, they often go into a national park, uh, a wildlife a preservation park, where they can see hippos and elephants and giraffes and all the good stuff. And so um, I think last time they were there, back in probably April or something, um, they stumbled upon something very special and they thought that it'd be great if I used it in my stitching. Now, um, it is special. So let me try and show this to you and then I'll tell you what it is. These are sort of fibers, see? Like very dry. Um, it looks kind of like maybe straw or something, 
is very, yeah, and I'm putting this all over the place. So these are kind of fibers. Unfortunately, I don't think I can put a needle on one of those and then start stitching. However, I could use it with a couching technique. So say I have this idea. So this morning I thought, oh, I, I really, really want to stitch Adam's Menagerie by um, Tempting Tangles. Uh, Leah, again, aviatrix stitcher stitching it. And um, it's it's really beautiful. It's a, it's a kind of like a a jungle scene, so to speak. There's this huge tree and then you've got animals like elephants, rhinos, giraffes. Um, and I really want to stitch this for my uh, youngest nephew, Amadou, who's, who will be four in March. And I thought this would be awesome if I somehow like to stitch the ground, maybe I could use this and then, and then, and then couch it on the, on the fabric. Now I need to tell you what this is. Um, this is actually elephant poop. Yes. This is elephant excrement. Now, obviously, it's completely dried up. Um, it's it's not. I mean, it's not gross. Well, the th the thought of what it is makes it gross, but it's actually just dried fibers. Um, I mean, how cool is this? I need to put this on a stitch piece, and if it's for one of my nephews, he's gonna love it. So I'm I will try my best to s insert elephant poop on the jungle piece. I have to, don't I? So there you go. They were very, very, very happy and excited. And they laughed at me a lot when they gifted this to me. That's improbable. And that probably will be the only one most probably stitching with elephant poop at some point. So that was one of the gift I got back in August. Anyway, so this is it. And then the very last thing, um, that's, that's a really nice story. And I'm very, very glad that I'm able to, um, give this away. Um, one of, uh, a, a, a lovely old lady living in our neighborhood had seen the exhibition we put together at my auntie's workplace. And when she saw the embroidery, um, and the cross stitching pieces and stuff, she actually, um, went into her stash. She, she doesn't she she probably did a lot of cross stitch when she was um younger but she has she has stopped stitching and so one day she came to my aunt with this particular design and said if you think it can interest your niece or somebody else please you know uh, i would be more than happy to give it away and so my aunt asked if i was interested and i said of course if if, if it's something that i could you know give away to somebody it would be great and so um, and so I have this gold collection uh, from Dimensions, full kit, to offer to you if you are interested. This is called Doll House Tea Party, and it's a kind of naive little tableau with um, dolls and um, a teddy bear, and then this beautiful little dollhouse, a rocking horse, everything, having tea together. This is from 1996 and it is the full kit. It has been opened, but nothing has been taken out of it and it's complete. I've checked it. And so it comes with all of the threads. Um, they're sorted by, most of you know how Dimensions kit come, but they're sorted by bunches and then there's this uh, thread card to put them on. The instructions are all in English. I've checked everything. The chart is as all dimension kits chart are. It's very clear. Everything's in English. It is, um, it includes a piece of mushroom Lugana, 25 count, two um, needles, all, again, all the threads, all the instructions. There are half stitches and full, full crosses and a lot of back stitch. A lot, a lot, a lot of backstitch. But for those of you who know the Dimensions kit, you won't be surprised. I mean, it's it's a regular um, kit. And I, I think it is lovely that some local neighbor thought of us, basically, um, because of the exhibition. And I would be delighted to pass this um, kit on to someone who would like to stitch it. 
And so again, um, I, I would be very glad to send it to anyone anywhere in the world. If you are interested in stitching this piece, um, please let me know in the comments. Just mention the fact that you would like to, um, to get the dollhouse tea party piece up kit sorry and um and if it's if you're if s several of you would like to have it i will probably draw a name randomly um and put the result on instagram say i'll give it two weeks um and um and comment back uh, on your comment on youtube um once that um the um the, the random pick um please be a subscriber. Do not mention anything about any giveaway or something. Um, and I think you have to be 18 so that I can get your address, um, send it to you. So, so yeah, it, it's just lovely that again, I mean, you know, embroidery from far away and nearby, and this is the result. So if you would like to have this kit, just let me know in the comments. And, um, again, I would be delighted to pass it on. And I think this is all I have for today. Um, I am extremely excited by the two starts um, that I have ongoing now. Um, I'm going to stitch and stitch and stitch um, and keep you all posted on Instagram, obviously. I hope to, um, to do my next update um, sooner rather than later seven weeks is too much then i forget half the stuff i want to talk about and then it's long and rambly and everything so um i hope to see you soon until then i wish you a lovely sunday morning afternoon or evening wherever you may be thank you again so very much for cheering me up and following all my shenanigans and for some of you inspiring me to start things and and dare things and and finish things and everything um i love you all so very much for that um be kind stitch well au revoir